நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the channel video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I explained about the characteristics of the house of Aquarius, the effects of the planet Sun, and Jupiter in the house of Aquarius and shared many more intricacies about the house. In this video, I am going to explain about the effects of other planets in the house of Aquarius, different planetary conjunctions and the effect of planetary positions. Now, let me start to explain the effects of the planet Moon in the house of Aquarius. Moon should not reside in the house of Aquarius because it will be in the 8th house from its own house Cancer. Therefore, the planetary position of the Moon in the house of Aquarius is not good. As I always usually reiterate a point that in order to know the strength of the Moon, you have to understand the Moon based on its light energy. In case when the moon resides in the house of Aquarius and it is Avani Avittam, Shravana Danishta, it will make the Aquarius house Subhatva. Whatever I mentioned as the characteristics of the Aquarius will not be valid anymore if the Shravana Danishta moon resides in the house of Aquarius. Therefore, when such a moon resides in the house of Aquarius, it will nullify the bad characteristics of Saturn such as sluggishness etc. And it will glorify the house of Aquarius. If you understand the concept of Subhatva, the predictions will be a cakewalk. Having said all these, the dark moon which is filled with dark energy will spoil the Aquarius house completely. The moon that has a lot of dark energy should not reside in the house of Aquarius. In addition to this, the moon will be in the 8th house from its own house Cancer as per Bhavat Bhavam. The planet that is in the 8th house from its own house will not deliver benefits. You have to make predictions based on the moon's light energy, the connection the moon receives, whether it's connection of Venus or whether it is connection of Jupiter. When the moon resides in the house of Aquarius, it becomes Pabatwa completely because it is also in the 8th house from its own house Cancer. In case, if the 4th house for a particular ascendant is also not good with this planetary position of moon in Aquarius, then the status of the mother is spoiled for the particular ascendant. The 4th house of the Kala Purusha, that is Cancer, the 4th house of a particular ascendant and the significator of the mother, moon, are used to check whether the status of the mother is good or not. Therefore, when the fourth house of the Kala Purusha, Cancer, is not in good status and also the fourth house of the Ascendant is not good and when Moon is in the eighth house from its own house Cancer, which is the fourth house of the Kala Purusha, then it indicates the status of the mother is not good, it is spoiled. You can say the mother will not behave like a mother or the communication with the mother will be bad. The significance related to the moon will be spoiled and there will be loss by the significance of the moon like it can be the water tattva of the moon 
or white colored products which is one of the significance of the moon. There might be bad effects due to one of the significance of the moon. If a loss is incurred with any water related business, then it means that the moon is spoiled in the birth chart of that person. The professions might include milk, dairy, juice or any white colored fluids. If these professions incurs loss, then it means the moon is spoiled in the natal chart. It means that the moon has no strength at all. I hope you all know my other concepts of Subhatva. I have mentioned many times the person will be inclined towards a field to work in a field or will choose the profession based on the planet which has got the highest Subhatva in their natal chart. The person will earn more based on the planet which has got more Subhatva in the natal chart. I have proved this by thousands of natal charts. It is due to my research of thousands of charts that I found these concepts to be true. My concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva are going to last for a very long time after my period. I'm going to write uh, books, I'm planning to write books on these concepts regarding professions etc. Let me explain about the effect of the next planet Mars in the house of Aquarius. When Mars resides in the house of Aquarius, most of the times there will be Parivartan of Mars and Saturn. Mars should not reside in the house of Aquarius. However, when Mars resides in the house of Aquarius, it will be in the 11th house from its Aries house and it will be in the 4th house from its another own house Scorpio. Anyways, it is not a good planetary position because Mars is 75% malefic. Please try to perceive the position of Mars in the Aquarius as follows. A 75% malefic resides in the house whose house lord is 100% malefic. Imagine a malefic resides in the house of another malefic. Try to bring the concept of Pabatwa here. This is the own house of Saturn which is already the house of Pabatwa. This is also called as Sama Uchavidu, that is equal exaltation house when it gets literally translated. Because in Capricorn Mars gets exalted whose house lord is Saturn and this is yet another own house of Saturn. Therefore when Mars resides in the house of Aquarius it is not considered to be good. Mars will be in the 11th house from its own house Aries and from the house of Scorpio it will be in the 4th house. When malefics become stronger in a natal chart it is not favorable. When Mars does not reside in the house with Subhatva then it will deliver harmful effects. What bad effects will Mars deliver when it resides in the house of Aquarius? Mars is a significator of the brother, so it will spoil the status of the brother. Mars will behave like a rowdy and it will do all the bad things in the name of courage and vigor. Mars will not hesitate to do evil things and will be ready to act as an evil. The significance of Mars will be definitely spoiled. The significance of Mars will be spoiled like the domain related to the red color provided Mars is not Subhatva. I am explaining about the planets which have got very direct strength. What if Mars resides in Aquarius? It is neither good. The person will be a very angry person, will behave without any forethought. This will increase the Pabatwa significance of the Mars. This is how the Mars and the Aquarius will behave. The Subhatwa or the Pabatwa of the planet will deliver more or less of good effects and bad effects. If the Mars that resides in the house of Aquarius was aspected by Jupiter 
or in conjunction with Venus, then whatever I mentioned as the effects of Pabatwa Mars will completely change. Having said all these, when Mars resides in the house of Aquarius, it is an inimical house to Mars and this will increase the bad effects of the Mars. Therefore, when a malefic resides in the house of Aquarius, which is Pabatwa house, it will not do any benefits during its dasha. In case, if Mars delivers benefits during its major planetary period, you have to consider that Mars is Subatwa. In any situation, when a malefic resides, that is, when Mars resides in the house of Aquarius, which is the house of Saturn, during the major planetary period of Mars, it will not deliver benefits. In case if Mars delivers benefits, then it means Mars has got some Subatwa. Now let me explain about the effect of the planet Mercury in the house of Aquarius. When Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius, of course it is heading towards its debilitation house, which is Pisces. However, Saturn's fixed house is such a favorable house for Mercury. This is the most friendly house for Mercury. There is a difference between the position of planet Mercury in Capricorn and Aquarius. The Capricorn is the most friendly house and the Aquarius is a friendly house to the Mercury. However, when Mercury resides in Aquarius, the Mercury is heading towards debilitation. When Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius, it will be in the 6th house from its own house Virgo and it will be in the ninth house from another house Gemini. In other words, Mercury will be in its 6th house from its own house Virgo which represents intelligence and it will be in the ninth house to another house Gemini which represents wisdom. Therefore, the house of Gemini will get strengthened. That is, the house of wisdom will get strengthened. This planetary position helps in enhancing the wisdom of the native. The Aquarius itself represents wisdom. I said Aquarius is a hidden house. So the wisdom is also not open to everybody. It is something hidden that the people have to explore. When Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius, of course, the native will be a very good astrologer. When it is in a quadrant house to the moon as well, then it is really auspicious. Imagine a situation where the native is ascendant of Aquarius and Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius and in the quadrant house to the moon and when Mercury is in Digbala, then it is highly auspicious. In addition to this, let us explore more points regarding this. So, when the Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius, it is in the ascendant house itself. Consequently, it has got Digbala and it has got Sthanabala as well, because it resides in the friendly house. In case, if the native is Capricorn ascendant, then Mercury is near Digbala and in case, if it is Pisces ascendant, in that case as well, the Mercury is near Digbala. Therefore, when Mercury attains Digbala and Sthanabala, as it resides in the friendly house, it delivers immense benefits. In addition to this, if it also gets Drigbala, that is Subatwa, then it delivers immense benefits. Therefore, Mercury in the house of Aquarius will deliver the best benefits. When Mercury resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good. It helps to gain wisdom, but for intelligence, it is a challenge. That is, to gain intelligence, it becomes a challenge. As per Bhavad Bhavam, there will be some loss regarding the house of Kanya, that is Virgo. Because when Mercury resides in the Aquarius, it will be in the sixth house from its own house Virgo. However, simultaneously, the native will have more wisdom since it resides in the ninth house, from its own house that represents wisdom that is Gemini.
This person can more easily explore astrology than astronomy. This will incline the person in research rather than calculation and software that is represented and signified by the house of Virgo. Well, now let me explain about the effect of the planet Jupiter in the house of Aquarius. The Jupiter in the house of Aquarius is almost good. It makes a person a saint, a person who is completely detached from life. This is a neutral house for Jupiter, not an enemical house. Jupiter and Saturn are not enemies. It is actually a neutral state. When Saturn and Jupiter are in conjunction, the Saturn will be rubbed off with the qualities of Jupiter and it will let the person get into spiritualism. I always used to say that when there is a connection between Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu and if it is also in connection to the Ascendant and Rashi, then definitely the person will be a saint. In this video also a while before I told you that Saturn that resides in the house of Aquarius will lead a person to run away from the family. One who becomes an ascetic before forming a family is really good because he has not spoiled the life of a girl. But if a person leaves the family after marrying a girl and after giving birth to two to three children or four to five children, since because the wife makes a lot of complaints always, then he is not definitely a saint. A man who thinks very selfishly, who leaves the family without caring about the family members is not a good ascetic. If the effect has to be in contrary to this guy, there must be some subhatsuva. Therefore, the Jupiter in the house of Aquarius will make a person a good ascetic and in addition to this, it will also give the leadership qualities. Okay, think about the fact why the Jupiter in the house of Aquarius can render leadership quality. If you think again and again about the reason, you will definitely find the facts behind the concepts. Because the Jupiter is in the house of Aquarius, will aspect the house of Leo. The house of Leo is a Raja Rashi. Therefore, when Jupiter aspects the house of Leo, it is such an auspicious one. When Jupiter is not affected or not Pabatva at all, when it aspects the house of Leo, then it will make the person a king. It will deliver all the leadership qualities. Based on which ascendant you are, based on the 10th house, when Jupiter aspects the house of Leo, then definitely it will give such a leadership quality. It will make the person a king. In addition to this, when the sun is also Subhatva, then it will make the person a great leader. We can even say that the person can be a team leader or a project leader in an organization. So this will be based on which ascendant you are. In addition to this, even if Mars aspects the house of Leo, it is considered to be beneficial. Even if the Lord Mercury aspects the house of Leo, it is considered to be auspicious. Whichever planet resides in the house of Aquarius will definitely aspect the house of Leo. Please try to understand this concept. I always insist on a point that is the Subhatva of the Sun and Subhatva of the Leo. Based on the concept that all the planets except the shadowy planets Rahu and Ketu that resides in the house of Aquarius must aspect the house of Leo, the planets that resides in the house of Aquarius will render the connections with the government because the planets that reside in the house of Aquarius will aspect the house of Leo by its seventh aspect. Therefore, the Jupiter that resides in the house of Aquarius makes the Leo Subhatva. The Leo will be strengthened and it will deliver benefits from the government and the connections with the government. 
it will deliver all the benefits from the government therefore when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius at least for the purpose of subhatva of the leo this planetary position is good when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius it will be in the 12th house from the house of pisces and it will be in the 3rd house from the house of sagittarius when a planet is in the 6th house or the 8th house or the 12th house from its own house as per bhavad bhavam it will not do the house effects of that particular house because sagittarius is the house of spiritualism okay therefore when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius it will be in the 3rd house to the sagittarius however when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius it is auspicious it is good to a certain extent it will deliver benefits to a certain extent the only reason is that since jupiter is in the house of aquarius it gives a leadership qualities due to the house of leo getting strengthened by jupiter in case if the native is born as virgo ascendant and jupiter aspects the 10th house as well and the sun resides in the house of leo then it will give great positions very higher position in an organization or great benefits from the government when the house of leo is strong and sun is strong and the sun gets directional strength or digbala then it is a great favor for example let us imagine a chart where the native is virgo ascendant and sun is in the house of gemini with digbala when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius that is in the 6th house to the native of virgo ascendant and in addition to this the jupiter aspects the sun by its 5th aspect and the aspects the house of leo by its 7th aspect definitely the person will be in a leading position today a person from aditya birla group called me and we had a conversation he possesses a very high level position in that organization at the very beginning of our conversation itself i told him that he will be in a very leading position in his organization and i also predicted that he will achieve more and he will reach greater heights he will be definitely designated as ceo of the organization or any such higher position then the person agreed that he based on his experience he will definitely achieve a very high position in that company how do we assess all this based on the house of leo and of course the house lord of the leo the sun in case the native is virgo ascendant and the sun is in the directional strength in the 10th house to the ascendant and then jupiter is in the 6th house to the ascendant house and aspects the house of leo and sun the native will have the innate quality of leadership therefore in brief when jupiter resides in the house of aquarius it will make the house of leo subhatva therefore the planetary position of the jupiter in the aquarius is very significant provided it is not pabhatva jupiter can be in conjunction with the sun or the moon in this house jupiter can be in conjunction with its friends when jupiter is in conjunction with venus or mercury it will not affect them much but it should not be in conjunction with saturn here it will deliver spiritualism then it will deliver the quality of detachment yet it will make the saturn subhatva if saturn is a favorable planet to the particular ascendant then the conjunction of the saturn and the jupiter is an auspicious one when saturn becomes a functional benefit to your ascendant which is supposed to deliver its good house effects then the conjunction of the saturn and jupiter in the house of aquarius is good and the major planetary period of the saturn and jupiter will deliver benefits let me give an example where this combination or conjunction is not a favorable one 
For example, for the native of Cancer ascendant, the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter is not good in Aquarius. At least for the native of Leo ascendant, this conjunction of the Saturn and Jupiter will take place in the 7th house. But for the native of Cancer ascendant, the conjunction of the Saturn and Jupiter takes place in the 8th house. Therefore, when the conjunction of the Saturn and Jupiter takes place in the house of Aquarius, for the native of Cancer ascendant, then the Jupiter will be spoiled and it will make the Saturn Subhatva. If you understand during a planetary conjunction that which planets get spoiled and which planet gets Subhatva, then you can make complete predictions. Let me now explain about the effect of the next planet, Venus. This is such an auspicious house for Venus. It is also heading towards the exaltation house. When Venus resides in the house of Aquarius, it will be in the 5th house from its own house Libra and it will be in the 10th house from its another own house Taurus. This is the house very much liked by Venus. I can even say that this is the most friendly house for Venus. In general, you have to classify whether the house is most friendly house or friendly house based on the category whether it is Chara Rashi or Thera Rashi, that is mobile sign or fixed sign. When Venus resides in the house of Aquarius, it has more strength because it is a fixed sign, that is Thera Rashi. However, when Venus resides alone in the house of Aquarius, it has its own significance because it aspects the house of Leo by its seventh aspect. It is such a great benefit that the native will enjoy benefits from the government, higher authorities, etc. Therefore, when one enjoys the major planetary period of Venus, when it resides alone in the house of Aquarius, the native is considered to be very, very fortunate. You have to also consider which house is this house to which ascendant. Even for the native of Sagittarius ascendant, it will be in the third house to the ascendant. This can definitely render benefits. Because you know the basic concept that the functional malefic when resides in the 3, 6, 10, 11th house, it will deliver benefits. For the native of Pisces ascendant, the Aquarius house becomes the 12th house, which is always an auspicious house for Venus. For the native of Pisces and Sagittarius ascendant, the Venus will not deliver benefits, but when Venus resides in the third house of Aquarius, it will not do harmful effects. Please think about why Venus will not deliver adverse effects. Because for the native of Pisces ascendant, the house of Aquarius becomes the 12th house. For Venus, it does not lose strength when it is in the 12th house to the ascendant. And when Venus resides in the 12th house, it makes the 12th house Subhatva. Therefore, when Venus resides in the house of Aquarius, it will not deliver adverse effects. And you have to, of course, check the star lots. When Venus resides in the house of Aquarius for the native of Sagittarius ascendant, it will be in the third house and it resides in the fixed house. Therefore, it will deliver benefits. Having said all these, when Venus resides alone in the house of Aquarius, without any conjunction and alone, then it can deliver benefits, but this Venus should not be in conjunction with Rahu. It should not be in conjunction with Saturn as well. When Venus is in conjunction with Saturn, it will make the Saturn Subhatva and during the major planetary period of the Saturn, it will deliver benefits, while during the major planetary period of Venus, the Venus will deliver adverse effects. When Venus is in conjunction with Rahu, then the Venus will be totally spoiled based on the difference in degrees of conjunction, which is 8 degrees 
13 degrees and 22 degrees respectively. I have already published many videos regarding the effects of the conjunction of Venus and Rahu with different degrees. When Venus and Rahu are in conjunction within 8 degrees, then Venus will be totally spoiled. I have already published videos regarding this, so please go through and watch those videos. I have explained what would be the effect of the conjunction of Venus and Rahu within 8 degrees, within 13 degrees and within 22 degrees and the concept that I explained in that video will apply for the conjunction of all the luminous planets and dark planets. I can teach the concepts in more detail on another occasion. When there is a planetary conjunction beyond 22 degrees, what would happen? If you want to know the answers for all these questions, you can check the video Rahu and Venus conjunction. Therefore, in a nutshell, when Venus resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good since it aspects the house of Leo. It is good when it resides alone in the house of Aquarius. When Venus is in conjunction with Mercury, it is considered to be more auspicious. When Venus and Mercury are in conjunction in the house of Aquarius and the one who enjoys the major planetary period of Venus and Mercury or Mercury are considered to be very very blessed. In addition to this, to make it more auspicious, if there is an aspect of Jupiter, then the person is considered to be highly fortunate. It is considered to be very, very auspicious when Venus and Mercury alone or in conjunction in the house of Aquarius without any connection of the dark planets or shadowy planets. The next planet that I am going to explain is Saturn. The planet that should not reside in the house of Aquarius is Saturn. This is the Moon Tricorn house for Saturn. When Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius, it will spoil everything. It will aspect the house of Leo, so it spoils the status of the father. When Saturn aspects the house of Leo, and also in connection with the house lord son, definitely it will spoil the status of the father. The father might be a couch potato or the father will not behave like a father at all. All these will happen when the Pabatwa Saturn aspects the house of Leo. In case if Saturn has additional Pabatwa, then it totally demolishes the house of Leo. For the native of Mithuna Lagna, that is Gemini Ascendant, when Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius, with Mars, conjunction or aspect, it means that the father is not good for that person. The father will be in a position who cannot carry his duty as a father, who could not be a responsible person in the family. Please try to understand the Subhatva and Pabhatva of the Saturn. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, when Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius, it naturally spoils the status of the father. In addition to this planetary position, when it is in conjunction with Rahu or Mars, then it totally spoils the status of the father. How the major planetary period of Saturn would be? It would be really, really worse. The major planetary period of the Sun will be worse. During the major planetary period of the Sun, it will completely spoil the status of the Father. The Father will rely on the Sun in this case. Because during the major planetary period of the Sun, it will bring down the status of the father to a very lower extent. The native of the Gemini ascendant will suffer because of the father during the major planetary period of the sun. 
The reason is that Saturn spoils the house of Leo. When you want to predict about the effect of the major planetary period of a particular planet, you have to consider the aspects of the malefic planets on the house and also the ninth house to the ascendant. And if you're going to check the status of the father, and in addition to this, you have to check the significator of the father, the son. When Saturn resides alone in the house of Aquarius, without any Subhatva, in its own natural way, it will not deliver benefits. In addition to this, you have to check the star lord that are present in the Aquarius. There are three stars in the houses of Aquarius, Avitam, Sadayam and Puratadi, that is Dhanishta, Satabisha and Purvabhadra. In case if it resides in the star Puratadi, that is Purvabhadra, whose lord is a benefic, you have to check which houses are owned by Jupiter in your natal chart. In case if Saturn resides in Sadhya Nakshatra, that is Satabisha, and if Rahu is not Subhatva, then the worse effects will be added. Having said all these, when Saturn resides in its Mootrikon house alone, without any Subhatva, it is not good. During the major planetary period of the Saturn, it will definitely deliver its worst effects. You have to understand the other effects based on which house is this to the ascendant. In case if Saturn becomes Pabatva, what would happen? Since it aspects the house of Leo, it will affect the status of the father, communication with the father, everything related to the father. In case if Saturn is in its ascendant house, that is the native is Aquarius ascendant, then the person will be of short stature. When the Saturn is without Subhatva, it signifies the short stature. If the person is lean, the person is influenced by Mercury. And if person is fat, then the person is influenced by Jupiter. And if the person is short, then the Saturn is reason for that. Well, tell me now, who is the reason for making a person tall? I told which planet is responsible for the short stature. Can you guess which planet is responsible for the tall stature? Who is straight opposite to Saturn? It is the sun. Therefore, the sun signifies the height of the person, the tallness of the person. If the sun is in connection with the ascendant or the sun is Subhatva in the natal chart and connected with ascendant, then the person will be tall. So when you understand something with one dimension, then you can understand the opposite dimension as well. Saturn should not be definitely in conjunction with the moon because it will affect the status of the mother and indeed more importantly the mind. In case if the moon has no light energy, then it is very bad. Today, I had two important online appointments. One I explained a while before. The client who holds a very higher rank in a particular reputed organization who approached me for an online appointment. I predicted the nature of his profession very exactly and I told him that he holds a very high position in a reputed organization and he will reach more heights in three or four years. He agreed to all the points that I have explained and he told me that he has been a follower of mine for two to three years. I make all these predictions based on the Subhatva of the houses. Another client who approached me, a father of a kid, I told the father that his son is mentally retarded and I also notice that his father is hiding those details from me. His father admitted that his son's mental status has not been stable since two years his arrival to India from US and he had stopped giving the medications and that is all the reason he had approached me.
how did I predict that his son is not mentally stable from this natal chart? It is nothing but the conjunction of the moon and the Saturn and they reside in the Puradam that is Purvashada Nakshatra. The moon has no light energy. The moon which is heading towards Amavasya is in conjunction with Saturn and the conjunction happened in the house of Sagittarius and the major planetary period of the moon happens. What would happen in this case? You have to make predictions based on the significance and the house effects. Imagine how much confidence I have in my predictions to convey to a father that his son is not mentally stable and that too he is hiding that information from me. His father admitted that his son was taking medications and he wanted to know whether his mental status would improve or not. Your predictions should never go wrong. A client should not contradict your predictions. If he had denied, no, my son is perfectly alright, then it would have been a failure. For me, it should not happen. If the prediction is once told, it should definitely happen. If the prediction goes wrong, there is only one possibility for a good astrologer, that is the date of birth or the time will be wrong. The moon which has no light energy, which is heading towards Amavasya, which has absolutely no Subhatva and it is in conjunction with Saturn and more importantly, it is in conjunction with Saturn in three degrees, what would happen during the major planetary period of the moon? The mind of the native will be spoiled and of course it affects the status of the mother because she would be concerned, worried about her son who does not have a stable mental health. She will not be happy, definitely she will be concerned about her son. And the son will be definitely affected mentally. The effect of this conjunction should never go wrong or can never go invalid as per the Vedic astrology. This is why I always reiterate a point that you can make 100% correct prediction based on the factors such as significance of the planet, the house effects, etc. Okay, now let us come back to the topic. Let us imagine that Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius. All the natural characteristics of the Saturn such as cheating, thieving, jealousy will be reflected in the native of Aquarius Ascendant or Rashi more or less based on Ascendant or Rashi. Depending on which house this is to the Ascendant, it will reflect Saturn's qualities. If Aquarius house is the 10th house, then Saturn will have influence on the 10th house. If the Aquarius house is the 6th house to the Ascendant, then the 6th house related house effects will happen, which has the influence of Saturn. If the Aquarius house is the Ascendant house or Rashi or the sign or your birth sign, then your character will reflect Saturn's qualities. Please try to understand all these based on Subhatva and Pabhatva and Sukshma strength of the planets. The Saturn can deliver benefits if only it has got Sukshma strength and remains Subhatva. When Saturn resides in the house of Aquarius without any Subhatva, it will be in a position to affect the employment in the government. The person will not be able to enjoy any job from the government, will not be able to enjoy benefits from the government and it will affect the status of the father etc. Everything whatever is related to the son will be definitely affected. The next planet that I am going to explain is Rahu. The Rahu behaves like Saturn. Whatever I said for Saturn will also apply for Rahu as well when Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius. Because the house lord is Saturn. I have mentioned in my video that Rahu should not reside in the Sthira Rashi of Mars. 
Although Saturn is a friendly planet to Rahu, it should not reside in the house of Aquarius, which is a fixed sign of Saturn. The Rahu should never get the connection of Saturn or Mars. Having said all these, it should not reside in the fixed sign of the Saturn. When Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius, if only it gets aspected by Jupiter, it can come to a normal state. If only Rahu that resides in the house of Aquarius gets a connection of the Jupiter or Venus, that is with the connection of a benefic, it can do benefits. Therefore, Rahu should not reside in the house of Aquarius. When it gets Subhatva, it is an antidote. In order to make complete predictions, please check which house is this to the ascendant. I will share one more important point here. In case if the native is Cancer Ascendant and Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius, which is the 8th house to the Ascendant, which is the 8th house to the native of Cancer Ascendant, it will impose suicidal thoughts in the native's mind. Because Rahu that resides in Aquarius will invoke suicidal thoughts. In case if the native is Aquarius Ascendant itself, Rahu resides in the Ascendant house and gets aspected by Mars, then it will definitely invoke suicidal thoughts. It depends on which house it is to the Ascendant. Aquarius becomes the 8th house to the native of Cancer Ascendant and the 8th house signifies longevity and Saturn also signifies longevity. Therefore, when Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius, what would happen? It will definitely invoke the native to commit suicide. When the 6th house lord is in the 8th house and the 8th house lord is in the 6th house and when Rahu is in connection with the 6th house, then definitely it will invoke suicidal thoughts. When the 6th house is connected to the lord of the 8th house, or the 8th house is connected to the Lord of the 6th house, then this planetary position invokes suicidal thoughts. And this will be delivered by Rahu. Therefore, Rahu should not reside in the house of Aquarius and it should not definitely get the connection of Mars. In case, if it gets connected to Mars, it will deliver very worse effects. When I say some negative effects of the planetary position, some of my subscribers get upset, but it is necessary to explain all these frankly. If any of my subscribers, family member, have Rahu in Aquarius and it is in the 8th house, please don't be concerned because you have to use much more practice to make complete predictions like the cusp of the Bhava the Subhatva, the Sukshma strength and a lot more and finally you have to check whether the family member undergoes the major planetary period of the Rahu. If the family member is not undergoing the major planetary period of Rahu, then you don't need to worry about it at all. In case if the family member undergoes the major planetary period of Rahu at a very younger age, then there will be no trace of such harmful effects. Having said all these, in general, when Rahu that resides in the house of Aquarius is not good, in addition to this, if it gets connected with Mars, then it will add fuel to fire, like it will deliver worse effects. All these will happen during the major planetary period of the Rahu. In case if Rahu gets connection of a benefic, like Jupiter, Venus, Lone Mercury or Waxing Moon, then it will deliver its benefits through its significance. However, it will deliver its effects just as Saturn. It is not an auspicious one. Let me explain about the next planet Ketu in the house of Aquarius. When Ketu resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good. It will deliver spiritualism, research mind. When Ketu resides in the Aries sign Aquarius, then the native will dig deeper 
and can explore a lot of secrets. This will give a highly researched mind. This can deliver complete wisdom to the native. Ketu signifies wisdom when it resides in the house of Aquarius and Scorpio. It is such an auspicious position. I usually reiterate a point that when Ketu resides in the house right from Libra to Pisces, then it is good one. The houses right from the house of Aries till Virgo are called as Arohana and the houses right from Libra to Pisces are called as Avrohana. The Ketu is nothing but the shadow of the southern node of the moon and when it resides in the houses right from Libra to Pisces in any one of the houses in this range, it is considered to be auspicious. When Ketu resides in the house of Rikshik or Kumb, that is Scorpio and Aquarius, then it will deliver benefits. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the house of Aquarius, it is considered to be very auspicious. Even if it is residing alone in the house of Aquarius, it will not deliver worse effects. But at the same time, you have to consider another point. When Ketu resides in the house of Aquarius, the Rahu will reside in the house of Leo. When Ketu or Rahu resides in that house that signifies father, it is not considered to be good. And that too when a person enjoys the major planetary period of the sun at a middle age or younger age, it is not good. If you see in a natal chart of a person who works in the government sector, still having Rahu in the house of Leo, then he would have enjoyed the major planetary period of the Rahu at his very younger age or he would have not crossed the major planetary period of Rahu at all. The significance of the planet or the house effects of a planet happens during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of the planet that is during Dasha or Antar Dasha. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the house of Aquarius, it is good. The Ketu will actually behave like Saturn. Depending on which ascendant you are, you have to make predictions. When Ketu has dignity in the house of Aquarius, then it delivers benefits. It will not deliver worse effects. In addition to this, if Ketu has got connection with Jupiter and Venus, it will pour crores of money. The major planetary period of the Ketu happens just for 7 years. But within that 7 years of time span, it will give a lot of wisdom and of course all the boga, wealth, etc. Ketu is not merely a planet of wisdom. It can also deliver all the boga that is precious. The planet which lets the native to enjoy the pleasure is Ketu. In brief, the major planetary period of the Ketu will be good when it resides in the house of Aquarius. Well, this is question time. For the native of Cancer Ascendant, when Rahu resides in the house of Aquarius and it has got connection with the Lord of the Sixth House, then what would happen? Let me repeat the question. For the native of Cancer Ascendant, when Rahu resides in the Aquarius and it has connection with the Lord of the Sixth House, what will happen? Please write your answer in the comment section of this video. In my next video, I will explain about which Dasha will be favorable to the native of Aquarius Ascendant and which Dasha will be unfavorable to the native of Aquarius Ascendant, which professions will be favorable for them and which colors will be favorable for them and which professions can bring success and uh, growth in their life and I'm going to share much more intricacies in my next video. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. 
This is Deepa signing off. Thank you.